So how many seasons can go by until the belief that last year's run to the college football playoff for the Cincinnati Bearcats was a fluke becomes a reality? And with the NFL schedule released, I'll share my thoughts on the Bearcats schedule, given that this is a daily Bearcats podcast, but I'll also share my thoughts on the Bengals schedule and the NFL schedule. It's all coming up on today's episode of Locked On Bearcats. Our Locked On Bearcats. Your daily podcast on the Cincinnati Bearcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making Locked On Bearcats your first listen every day. It's free and available everywhere you get your everywhere you get your podcast. Don't forget if you're watching on our Locked On Bearcats YouTube channel, which we are so close to hitting 100 subscribers, you can subscribe to the Locked On Bearcats YouTube channel, and you can also like this video and share a comment on it. If you're downloading from an audio platform, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher or wherever you get your podcast, don't forget to subscribe there too. And then you can also share a comment or and or give it a rating. All of that helps more Bearcats fans like you find this podcast. Alex Frank here, former sports director of UC's Bearcats Media Student-Run Media Organization. Comment, I was a play-by-play announcer for both Bearcats football and men's basketball home and away games. I made so many connections with those in the athletic department and those who cover the team on a professional basis and bringing all of that experience here to the Lockdown Bearcats podcast. Straight up question, how many years can go by for the Cincinnati Bearcats football program until the narrative, because I know it's out there, how many years can go by for the Bearcats football program until the narrative that last year's playoff run was a fluke is a reality? You already know that there are doubters surrounding this Bearcats football program. When you are the first group of five team to reach the college football playoff, there are going to be doubters. Those who were there before, those who are there now, and those who will come in the future. There will be. That's just the way the sports media world works. That's why there are stories written. If there weren't doubters, there'd be nothing to talk about, like this talking point today. Whenever a story happens like this, Whenever a story like the Bearcats reaching the college football playoff, the Bengals going to the Super Bowl, the New York Mets going to the World Series in 1969, the New England Patriots with a former sixth-round draft pick in Tom Brady winning the Super Bowl in 2001, pulling one of the greatest upsets in Super Bowl history against the greatest show on turf and the then St. Louis Rams. Whenever a story like that happens, Whatever a team that hasn't been somewhere before, like the Cubs winning the World Series in 2016, like the Bengals going to the Super Bowl and winning the playoff game for the first time in 31 years, so many other programs around the country, Roy Williams in college basketball never could win the big game until he finally did in what, his 17th season as a head coach? It nev- The doubts never leave you. That's why your identity as an NFL, that's why I, I've talked about this before. Your identity as an NFL quarterback is formed within your first couple of seasons. And that's why I said after week two last year with the Bengals, that it was time to evaluate Joe Burrow on wins and losses. And from that point on, more often than not, when it was a big game, he won and the Bengals won too because of him. So with the Bearcats, There are doubters. And think about it. The talent that's not going to that that was lost from last year's team to the NFL. It's moving to the Big 12. It's the fact that they kind of got lucky last year going to the college football playoff. You know, there was a graphic during the Bearcats Temple game. The ESPN broadcast showed a graphic. Clay Matvick and Rocky Boyman ran through that graphic of all the things. That the Bear that needed to happen for the Bearcats to get to the college football playoff. There was win dominantly. There was have a two-loss champion in the Big 12 or some other conference. Have all these teams lose. It's not just, and I think Notre Dame winning out was on there too. It's not just what the Bearcats did last year. It's what other teams did around them. It was Ohio State losing two games. 
It was the Big 12 producing a two-loss champion in Baylor. It was the ACC having a down year. It was the Pac-12 producing a two-loss champion and having a down year. Utah beating Oregon twice helped that, mainly the first time in November. It was so many things that happened around the Bearcats football program. Notre Dame going 11-1 and was, was instrumental to the Bearcats' run. It would have been very interesting if Notre Dame had lost one or two more games if the Bearcats had gotten in. So while it was great that Cincinnati got in, it's a season I will never forget as a Bearcats fan and alum. You will never forget either as a Bearcats fan, alum, and or maybe both. You will never forget it. But you also have to remember that there was some luck involved. And there's luck involved for any team who makes the college football playoff. But you don't want to end up like teams including Michigan State, Oregon, Washington, or Florida State. Those are the teams I just routed off the top of my head. Why? Because those teams have been to the college football playoff only one time, and that was their peak. They have plateaued since then. Either they're not very good right now, or they're good, but they're not playoff good. You don't want to be one of those teams. Mind you this, those four teams I just mentioned are from, the, are from Power 5 conferences. Cincinnati is going to a Power 5 conference. Of course, there are going to be doubters. Well, can they do what they did in the American in the Big 12? I mean, it's the Big 12. First off, the Big 12, no offense, might be the lowest ranking Power 5 football conference. It goes SEC, Big 10, and then maybe the ACC when Clemson's good. Pac-12, eh, there's a lot of good teams, not a, not a great team. The Big 12, well, they haven't produced a playoff team besides Oklahoma, and Oklahoma has never won a playoff game. The Big 12 is the only conference in college football that has not won a college football playoff game. Now, basketball is a different story, but this is football, and I think it'll benefit the Bearcats going to the Big 12 because they're familiar with at least two opponents, UCF and Houston. I think they're also some. I think they're also very familiar with West Virginia. I think they can get familiar with teams like Oklahoma State and Baylor and Iowa State and those teams. BYU shouldn't be too much of an issue for Cincinnati either. When the Bearcats get to the Big 12, it is going to be very interesting to see how quickly they adapt. I firmly believe that if the Bearcats are not contending for a Big 12 championship and subsequently a college football playoff appearance by year two, in the Big 12, this run is a fluke from last year. And I am the and I will always hype up the Bearcats on this podcast, but I'm also going to keep it real. Because I understand because here's the thing. Remember the Bengals in 2005 how fun that team was and the expectations for the team in 2006 were huge and they underachieved. They went 8 and 8. Next year they went 7 and 9. Next year, they bottomed out at 4-11-1. and one. It never felt the same. Even when they made the playoffs in 9 it was like, well, it's about damn time they're back. It never felt the same. If you distance yourself from success and the college football playoff run, it's not going to feel pretty. It's going to feel tense. It's going to feel pressurizing to win big games. It's going to feel not as fun. It's going to feel like you have to get back. If you continue this run of success, which I think the Bearcats will, then obviously last year's playoff run was not a fluke. Now, the Bearcats can compete for Big 12 championships annually, and I think they're going to compete for Big 12 championships perennially. Maybe not annually. Now, could they? Sure. But if they're not competing for a college football playoff berth by year two in the Big 12 conference, given the talent that is still here and given the recruiting – and given the fact that they have the best head coach in the conference right now, potentially when they join the Big 12, they have the best head coach, then was last year's run just a product of luck and, I guess, talent and I, I, or just simply a product of luck? And then you can say it was a fluke. It is a very interesting question to think about. Up next, um, so I mentioned the... Bearcats competing next year for a third straight conference championship, but it's going to be a hard-earned championship given the schedule. 
The NFL schedule was released last night, so I thought I'd share some thoughts on the Bearcats schedule, including one key big reason why I'm looking forward to the Bearcats joining the Big 12. I'll touch on that next. But first, I got to tell you about Bill Bar. So imagine this for a minute. You're dipping your finger into that plastic tub of birthday cake frosting and then opening your eyes and realizing that it was only 150 calories and 16 grams of protein. Well, that's what it's like to eat a birthday cake puff from Bill Bar. By the way, happy birthday to Cincinnati. It's 513 day. It's the 13th day of the fifth month of the year, which translates to 513, and that's the area code for Cincinnati. Now, if it were my birthday today, which it's not, I'm going for German chocolate cake. Maybe Bill Bar can make puffs, German chocolate puffs. Mmm, I have to reach out. See, built birthday cake puffs are available right now, and we can't promise that they will be there tomorrow. So go get them today at built.com. And if you haven't tried the puffs, I'm going to tell you a little secret because, you know, you all are my friends, and friends tell secrets. A chocolate-covered marshmallow protein bar. Yup, you heard me. A chocolate-covered marshmallow protein bar. Delicious flavored marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. And they're only 150 calories, 16 grams of protein are included, only 9 grams of sugar. This is a limited-time flavor. It's an amazing option if you're looking for a healthy way to get flavor and variety in your day. And they're made with collagen protein. I may have, or I may or may not have pronounced that right. I'm not a doctor. That may your body will absorb more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. So go to built.com and use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Make sure to go check out Locked On NBA Big Board host Rafael Barlow from NBA Draft Junkies and author of the NBA Big Board newsletter is joined by Richard Stamen, Sam Ferris, and Leif Thulin, giving fans an in-depth look into the NBA Draft, Mock Draft, Player Rankings, and of course, Big Boards. It's free and available everywhere you get your podcasts. Alex Frank here with you on this Friday, May 13th of 2022. Happy Friday the 13th. I believe in good luck on Friday the 13th because I'm a naturally optimistic person. So when it came to time to choosing my belief for Friday the 13th, of course, I chose I believe in good luck on it, which I actually do. So I also believe that the Cincinnati Bearcats going to the Big 12 is obviously amazing. It's, you know, a huge milestone and achievement for this university. For this university that is historically renowned, it's, it's produced a lot of great sports stars, Oscar Robertson, Kenya Martin, Sandy Koufax, Desmond Ritter. The list goes on and on and on. Kevin Euclid, the list goes on. But for the first time, it's going, it, but for the first time in its over 200 year history, it's going to be in a Power Five conference. A football program that 30 years ago was being threatened to fold, leave. Now it's going to be playing in a Power 5 conference coming off a college football playoff berth. But there's one big thing I love about this. It eliminates what I call the early life or death game. So this year the Bearcats open the season in Arkansas, and I'm looking forward to that game as much as anybody, as much as any of you listening to this podcast. That's when there's going to there's no shortage of content. You don't have to, you know, scrape the bottom of the cookie jar to find content. Not that, not that I'm not doing that. Because you deserve it. But there's going to be content out the wise zoos once football season starts. So, the Arkansas game is big. But, as I've said, if the Bearcats lose that game, what really is there to play for? They're not going to go to the college football playoff. They may not go to a New Year's Six Bowl. Now, they can win out very easily. They can win out, be 11-1, play for a conference championship, and they can win and go to a New Year's Six Bowl. I'm not saying that that can't happen. But if the goal is to go back to the college football playoff, which I might be naive when I say this, I think it can happen. I think Cincinnati, given that they went to the playoff last year, they should be considered if they go 13-0. But last year, think about this. The season hinged on two games. Indiana and Notre Dame. I remember sitting in the stands in Bloomington when it was 90 degrees outside, and damn it, it was a hot one. 
I mean, for some reason, I didn't put it on sunscreen before. That was a mistake. So it's 90 degrees out. And I'm sitting there. And I'm stand, I'm sitting in the stands. And the Bearcats are down 14 to nothing early. They can't get anything going offensively. And I'm like, the season is on the line. And it's only game three. That's what happens when you play in the American Athletic Conference. You lose one game and your playoff chances, gone. The Big 12 won't let that happen. The life or death game won't come in week one or three or five. It could come in week 11 or 12 towards the end of the season, like Oklahoma, Oklahoma State last year. But you won't have the, the mounting pressure of, if we don't win this game, our playoff chances are doomed. The players probably don't feel that. You as a fan probably do. I sure as hell do. That won't happen in the Big 12. This, the Bearcats season last year was unbelievable. But it was always on life support. Because if the Bearcats lost one game to Indiana or Notre Dame, those were the games we thought, okay, they could lose one of those games. We didn't think they were going to lose a conference game. Now, once they got to conference play, it was, oh, every team's going to give them their best shot because they beat Indiana, they beat Notre Dame. But the season, in essence, came down to the Notre Dame game. First, it came down to the Indiana game. Then it came down to the Notre Dame game. Because if they lost one of those games, their season was over. Period. In terms of the playoff. Now, they could have gone to a New Year's Six Bowl. You won't have that in the Big 12. Now, I said a conference championship would be a third straight and hardest earned of the previous three. Why? Look at the schedule. First off, you see SMU and UCF on the road back-to-back -back weeks. That's a gauntlet. That is a two-game gauntlet. This program has not lost. The Bearcats have not lost a conference game in three years. That's going to be put through the ringer in those two weeks. Now, the home schedule is easy. I mean, I, Kennesaw State, Indiana, USF, T uh, ECU, Navy, Tulane, woof. They should win all those games by 20. Okay, so there's six wins. Go to the road games. Arkansas? Hmm, I don't know. Miami? Win. Tulsa? Win. Uh, Temple? Win. Uh, and then the other two. So there's nine. Okay. So they got Arkansas, SMU, and UCF. I think they beat SMU, maybe not UCF. And maybe not Arkansas. I think this is a 10-win team, at least. But this schedule is not going to be easy. It won't be an easy run of the conference championship. And it's because of a roster overhaul. You know, they're not going to be able to walk in to... Uh, Spectrum Stadium in Orlando, or uh, what's SMU Stadium? Gaylord something, I think. SMU Stadium, and just, you know, roll the balls out and say, line up and say, we're better than you, come at us. I don't think it's going to be like that. I think what this season's going to be is it's going to be every single team, they know they're now playing against a college football playoff program. And maybe a topic for another day is the perception from the other side, you know, how opponents are viewing Cincinnati. That's a very interesting thing to think about because last year it was they had the bullseye on their back as the conference champions and a playoff contender. Now they're two-time conference champions and they're coming off a college football playoff berth. That, I think, has – that is something I think opponents aren't going, are going to take very seriously. They're going to be chomping at the bid when they see Cincinnati on their schedule, especially for revenge games like Tulsa, maybe SMU, perhaps the Bearcats go on the road for the conference championship, Houston. I, Houston, they you have to think the Cougars are going to be ready if they play Cincinnati in a conference championship, whether it be in Nippert Stadium, whether it be in TD ECU Stadium down in the Space City. Very interesting to think about. But again, it's a very difficult schedule, even though the home schedule is easy. Road games at Arkansas, SMU, and UCF? Um, all right. You know, I don't know. That's going to be a tough, tough battle. So up next, uh, I'll give my thoughts on the Bengals schedule, kind of fun topic Friday segment three, including a brutal second half. And I also have something that I thought about over the weekend 
about the grass not being greener on the other side. I'll touch on that next, but first I got to tell you about Bet Online. You see, Bet Online is your continued source. That's our partners. It's their continued source, your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. You can find all of the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and next season's, even next season's NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting, wagering information from live betting to the playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. The Miami Heat last night becoming the first team to advance to the conference finals this season. They beat Philadelphia in game six of the conference semifinals last night. They'll take on the winner of Milwaukee and Boston in the Eastern Conference Finals starting next week. Game six of that series tonight in Milwaukee. Bucks with a chance to close out the series. Warriors can close out the Grizzlies tonight in game six out in San Francisco. And the Mavericks and Suns going to a surprisingly surprising game seven. Did not expect that series to go seven games. Game seven will be, I believe, Sunday. So very interesting playoffs this year in the NBA. I, I've loved the competitiveness. I don't think there's a clear-cut favorite to win the championship right now. I mean, Golden State lost to Memphis by 40 without Ja Morant on Wednesday. Let that sink in. Uh, Alex Frank here with you, Locked on Bearcats podcast. It is a Friday, May 13th, 2022. So the Bengals schedule is released. We heard on the Bengals booth podcast, you heard Dan Horde mention it on this show last week, that in his interview with Vice President of Broadcast Planning for the NFL, Mike North, say that the Bengals are going to have to get used to not playing 1 o'clock games. All right, so eight, eight of the Bengals' 17 games this season are starting at 425 or later. And there's only one time where they have back-to-back games starting at 1 o'clock. I mean, you talk about a contrast of where the Bengals were at this time last year when the schedule came out, and you're like, okay, can they get to seven wins? Maybe get to 10, maybe a playoff berth. Is that a stretch? Well, they ended up playing in the Super Bowl. So clearly it wasn't a stretch. And now the schedule's out. You're coming off a Super Bowl appearance. You've gotten rid of the elephant in the room of not winning the playoff game since 1990 when the Bearcats football program was in dire straits and on life support. And now you have eight games that start at 425 or later. Five primetime games, two at home, three on the road, all against each of the division opponents in the AFC North. And the final Monday night game of the season comes on January 2nd in Cincinnati against the Buffalo Bills. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait for the football season to start. And yes, I may live and work in Macon, Georgia right now. But damn it, I'll be at every Bengals game that I can get to. You watch. So, I just wish they played on my birthday weekend. But, you know what? Maybe that saves me some stress and I can actually enjoy my 24th birthday. I know the Bearcats play that Friday night. And maybe I'll go to Montgomery Inn after the game. Anyway, or Skyline Chili. Skyline Chili after the game Friday and then Montgomery Inn on Saturday, which my birthday's on a Saturday this year. So, I'm also off work. So, that's good. Uh, anyway, so... The Bengals have the maximum five primetime games. They're one of 13 teams in the NFL that have that. I can't wait for that. Now, all division road games in primetime, I don't really love that. But at the same time, James Rapine on the Locked On Bengals podcast, a good friend of mine, said, you know, that shows the popularity of the Bengals, that they're playing every division game on the road. It's like the Bengals are the hottest ticket for these other teams. They got Sunday night games at the Ravens and Steelers. They have a Monday night game at Cleveland on Halloween, which is going to be an incredibly hostile, raucous environment. And I just think about, you know, the 425 games at the 425 game at home against Kansas City, 425 game at Tampa Bay. I think about other games that could be flexed. I see the Chiefs and Buccaneers game as flex options. Maybe the Browns game week 14 is a flex option. I see maybe the Saints. Maybe the Ravens in week 17. I mean, maybe New England in week 16. I mean, every single game matters in the NFL, despite the 17th game edition. But I also look at the, and I look at the second half mainly. The second half of the Bengals schedule. Every team but two. And by the way, those two teams can very easily make the playoffs again this year, get back to the playoffs. 
But every team but two teams in the final eight games of the season made the playoffs. Pittsburgh made the playoffs. Maybe, you know, they got lucky getting there, but they still made it. Tennessee made the playoffs last year. We all know that play, how that playoff game went. Kansas City, of course. Tampa Bay, New England, Buffalo, and Baltimore. So, I'm sorry, not Baltimore. Disregard that. So, six of the eight teams the Bengals play in the final eight weeks of the season made the playoffs. And the two teams who didn't, the Ravens and Browns, they can very easily get back this year. The Ravens are going to be healthier. The Browns upgraded a quarterback and wide receiver. We know their defense is solid. So, this is going to be an absolute gauntlet. Now, I can run through the schedule right now and tell you what I think is going to happen. I can't think of a better opponent than Pittsburgh in week one. Why? Because you're coming off an AFC championship. You're entering this new era. But what's what's carrying over from the previous era of Bengals football is the hatred that this fan base has for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And what better way to open up the season than at home, first time seeing the Bengals in a regular season or postseason game since the playoff game against Vegas. And if if you remember how loud the crowd was that game, It's probably going to be like that against Pittsburgh. And you'll have your Steelers fans there. It's going to be an electric atmosphere. It's going to be a beautiful day, a 1 o'clock game. It's on September 11th. I mean, I would love – I mean, wouldn't you love if Joe Burrow ran out of the tunnel carrying the American flag? That would tell you everything you need to know about Joe Burrow and how revered he already is in Cincinnati. Um, Spoiler alert, I got that as a win. They go to Dallas week two. I like that that game is early in the season. Because last year, the Bengals won a difficult game against Minnesota, a tough game against Minnesota, a very close game. They went on the road to Chicago, who they played lousy against the Rams in week one. They go on the road, Bengals play lousy in week two, and they lose. Come out flat. They can't come out flat against Dallas. I don't care if Dallas has lost Amari Cooper to the Browns and Lyle Collins to the Bengals. I don't care if their defense is overrated. What I do care about is it's the Dallas Cowboys, and it's a nationally televised game. And the Cowboys always seem to play well early on in the season, as they did last year. So that's a game I think the Bengals win because I will take Joe Burrow, and I'll take Evan McPherson as the better clutch kicker than Greg Zerline. So I'll take the Bengals there. I'll take them to beat the Jets. They learned their lesson from last year. You can't underestimate any team in this league, and the Jets especially this year because they are much improved. We'll get to see the Bengals go up against Sauce Gardner, whoever which receiver goes up against them, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, whomever. Thursday night home game against the Dolphins. I would suspect that game is the Ring of Honor game. It could be the Buffalo game late in the season. I would think it's going to be the Thursday night game in week four is the Ring of Honor game. So I'll take the Bengals to beat the Dolphins. They go to Baltimore week five. I'm going to be realistic here and say that game is is a loss. I, I, I do think the Bengals are better than the Ravens, but... I don't know. I can't come around to say win there just yet. And then this is just my 1.0 prediction. They'll beat the Saints on the road. They'll come home and beat the Falcons. We might see Desmond Ritter that game. I think we very well could. They go to the Browns week eight, Monday night football. The Bengals have always struggled to beat the Browns with, since Joe Burrow has been here. I'm not sure why. Um, I'll put that as an L for now. They come home to face Carolina. I'll say win there. So they are... Seven and two going into the bye, feeling really good. They go to Pittsburgh week 11. I'll say win there. Tennessee week 12 win. Kansas City week 13 win. Cleveland week 14 win. So 11 and two. Tampa Bay week 15. Eh. I'll say lost there. At New England week 16. I'll say, I'll say lost there, but they'll beat Buffalo and Baltimore. So I think they'll be 13 and four. Do I think it's enough to win the division? I think 13 wins should be. I haven't looked at Baltimore's schedule entirely or Cleveland's schedule entirely or Pittsburgh's for that matter. But I do think that 13 wins is in the cards for this team. You have to remember the Bengals last year went to the Super Bowl and Joe Burrow led the NFL in yards per attempt and completion percentage. And the, I mean, the offensive line was a mess. And it got better this offseason. And... Excuse me, Hayden Hurst might be an upgrade over CJ Uzama in terms of production on the field. And the defense got better. Like the critic, like the Bengals defense to me is underrated. 
They held in the second half of the season last year, the Raiders, Steelers, Broncos, Raiders again, Titans, all under 20 points, and they allowed three points to Kansas City in the second half in both games they played against them. How is that not a good defense? So, um, my other thoughts on the NFL schedule. So, Brady and Mahomes are playing against each other for the sixth time in their careers. That is so unique to me. Because you have these court, these two quarterbacks who are 18 years apart in age. And yet, this is the, this is the sixth time they're playing against each other. They've already met in a Super Bowl. They've already met in an AFC Championship game. They've already played a handful of other classic games in their careers. When Mahomes first became a starter, Brady was supposedly on the decline of his career. But then he's found the fountain of youth in Tampa. I mean, this is a rivalry that we might see once every two years, if not every year, if these two teams go to the Super Bowl. This was supposed to be just uh, maybe a once or twice, maybe three times a year thing. Three times thing. Now it's number six. Most unique quarterback rivalry in the history of the NFL. Of course the Cowboys got a week one Sunday night football home match. Like just of course they did. Against Tampa Bay. Which will probably play the, play out the same way it did last year. The Cowboys will play really well. But Tampa Bay will make enough plays to win the game late. Uh, the first Amazon Prime Video Thursday night football matchup. Love it. Chargers Chiefs. Oh, sign me up for that. These two teams played two classics last year. And if you're the Chargers, I mean, you open up the season at home against Vegas and then on the road to Kansas City on a short week. I mean, this your season, talk about needing to set a tone and whether that's a positive or negative tone. I mean to tell you that they can, very, they can easily be one and one. I can see that probably being the best case and probably the most likable outcome. I can see them being 2-0, but I can also see them being 0-2. Your season, five days in, could be off the rails at 0-2. That's the downside of playing a week one Sunday night game followed by a week three, a week one Sunday game and then a week two Thursday game. Whew. All right, that's going to do it for me today here on Lockdown Bearcats. We covered a lot this week. Um Thanks to Russ Heltman for joining on Monday. Thanks to you for listening, making it your first listen every day. Don't forget, if you're watching on the Lockdown Bearcats YouTube channel, to subscribe. We're just shy of 100 subscribers. That number is only going to increase thanks to you. And you can also, after subscribing, like and share a comment on this video. If you're downloading from an audio platform, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Stitcher, don't forget to, first off, subscribe to the podcast and then share a comment or give it a rating, or you can do both. All of that helps more Bearcats fans like you find this podcast. As always, you can follow me on social media at Frankie underscore Natty with two N's, N-N-A-T-I. You can follow me on Instagram, AlexFrank9 underscore, or email me at Alex3Frank at gmail.com. Once again, thank you for making Lockdown Bearcats your first listen every day. Now go make your second listen, Lockdown Big 12, your daily Big 12 news in less than 30 minutes with Big 12 expert Josh Neighbors. It's free and available everywhere you get your podcasts. For the Lockdown Bearcats podcast, I'm Alex Frank. Have a great rest of have a great rest of your five one three day. Have a great weekend. Um, enjoy the NBA playoffs, Stanley Cup playoffs, Major League Baseball. The Reds are starting to win, so that's good for my good friend Jeff Carr and the Lockdown Reds podcast and the city of Cincinnati. Uh, make your schedule predictions, make your travel plans for the upcoming football season. I'm going to do that this weekend. Have a great rest of your week. Have a great weekend, and I will talk to you all on Monday. Ooh, cut that off short.